There's over 4,000 Germans booked in for Europe this summer. You come and take us out with your top firm, then you take us on tour. You won't know what's hit you. You couldn't hit water if you fell out of a boat. Cool, let's get involved. Tell us a little about the film and your roles. You want to kick off, Paul? Callum and do that. Go on, Go on Cal. Um, well, the film's called The Firm. It's about uh, these two being at each other and also the younger character, myself, um, coming into The Firm and uh, getting, in getting involved with, with Bex. Cool. Were you fans of the original? Were you... We were all like massive fans of the original and uh, I think Nick's come out and said that was the film that made him want to be a filmmaker as well. So we all had, uh, as all, all the actors on the film, had nothing but total sort of, you know, love and respect for the original and it's full of amazing performances from, you know, Phil Davis and Gary Oldman and all those amazing yeah, actors. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, and it was, it was a real sort of... There's an element of sort of fear and excitement to s sort of take that challenge on and try and put our own stamp on things. And, you know, we weren't trying to outdo the original. We were, if anything, this is a film in homage to that. So, um, and I th you know, we're really proud of the end result, really. We're very proud of the film. Yeah, it's yeah. brilliant. I was, I was going to say, was it intimidating to take on? Because it was pretty iconic at the time. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, a huge, it's a huge sort of challenge, you know. And, I mean, there were certain people that were saying, do you really want to do that? Do you, you know, do you know what I mean? There's that mm. mentality of, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But the fact is that when, I read the, when we all read the script, Nick loves scripts, the fact that Callum's character, Dominic, who's very much a peripheral character in the original, he is now the lead character, and it's a much more sort of coming-of-age story. It's a sort of rites of passage film, and I think there was enough about it that was different. Uh, and I think a real sort of testament to Nick's achievement actually is the fact that when you do see our version, very quickly you kind of forget about the original, and you're kind of completely mm. believing in our version. I think that's that's a real achievement. I think mm. because, like you said, the first one's su such a an iconic piece of work. Mm. I think this is definitely one that I th say to take your girlfriends to see this one. Everyone's well, a winner. You go, you know? yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I think when it gets a bit raw. I think, yeah. I think this sort of, yeah, this, the remake, adaptation, you know what I mean, sort of thing, it's like, because it, it is about Dominic, you know, it is, focuses more on Dominic and Dominic's story, you know, sense of belonging, wanting to be sort of part of um, a group of friends, you know, and sort of, and you really feel for, you know, I mean, I can say that myself, you know, be, even being in the film, you know, you sort of really feel for Callum and it's, mm. it is testament to his performance, um, you know, how you kind of look into his eyes and you see it through, through his, heart, his eyes and uh, you sort of, you kind of want it, you sort of, you feel for him, you know, and you can see that he won't, you know, you can see he doesn't belong mm. in a way. And then there's, there's, there's sort of, then you can, then you sort of think he does, but then you sort of, you can really see that maybe, just maybe don't, you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you all nailed your parts, and uh, at points, even though, okay, you know, the gist of Dom's character that he isn't, you are all badasses at the one point, and presuming that you're not like that in real life, how do you get riled up and ready for those hardcore scenes? I mean, do you think about the missus nagging about the dishes or something? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the great thing is um, <laughs> about the real sort of big scenes, just in sort of the, the sort of big scenes when... Lots of you, you know. It's a, for 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 Danny and I. It was like I was standing on one side of the road. He was on the other, and there were two hundred young men behind us, all charged up. Do you know what I mean? And he had the same, you know. So you sort of, uh, it's like a crest of a wave, really. That sort of adrenaline and that sort of thing just runs right through you. And before it, it sort of, it's just there. It's sort of in place. Because if you was any other way, mm. them two hundred extras mm. behind you. <laughs> they'd, they'd run out, you know, they'd stamp over you, do you know what I mean, sort of thing. You wouldn't, they wouldn't sort of, uh, you know, I'm I, right. I remember them coming round the corner, actually, because the principal characters would arrive on set differently and all the sort of extras would sort of meet up in a different sort of area because of, due to sort of sheer sort of mass of people. Mm. And we arrived on set, it was one of the early sort of fight sequences and then I'm sort of waiting there like that and then someone's on the radio going, right, right, send them round, like that. And then all of a sudden I look up the street and there's these 200 sort of Millwall firm coming around the court and you just think, I've got to lead this. Do you know what I mean? I've got to lead from the front. And I was like, I mean, I was, you know, it's a lot to take on really. You sort of got to, you know, just sort of dive in and get on with it, I guess. And then how easy is it to switch off from that? Because you just, you know, you go mental and it's very believable. You can well, no, see I mean, that, like, in I don't your know face. About, I don't know about you. I, I felt very... Um, 
you know, because you should always, you should always try and keep your characters and the actors separate. You know what I mean? Because you can mm. kind of get a bit messed up in it all. But I remember going. It was um, it was either a, a, a 30th birthday party or something like that. I, I went. No, <laughs> you seriously. Told me about I, it. No, yeah. You told and, me. I, and I went back. I went to this 30th after we'd been going at it all day like that. And I just was so wound up in the bar with people. You and sort of bowled in there. Was like, was, yeah. I felt ten feet tall, you know, and I sort of walked in and I was like really in people's faces. Really? And my brother went, calm down, what's the matter with you? Yeah. You know, and I, was, I felt really in it still. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we, we were having to sort of do those sort of fight sequences. I mean, how many takes did we do of that sort of, you know, oh, loads, over loads. and over and over again? I needed a Valium or something. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you did. It was took a lot. It did. It yeah. sort of. It really did take a lot out. I think of you, eventually, yeah. when you, I think eventually when you did come down, it was so exhausting. Yeah, <laughs> a really good night's sleep. I have a little kit. Yeah, yeah, very tiring. So with risk, because you're speaking to a northerner, what football teams just support? I have to ask. Arsenal, Millwall, Leighton Orient. Leighton. <laughs> Clearly the best That's team the out of them. I yeah, <laughs> great. Um, so, can you teach me some co Cockney rhyming slang, please? I'm really sorry for nausing a night out with you and your wife. What's your name? Dominic. Now I've got some butter walking in here like that. Yeah. More metaphorical, really, it's like, than slang, do you know what I mean? Than sort of slang, that, that rhyming sort of stuff. So, when you jump up and leave us, you can give it all that, like, I'm going to trap. See you later, yeah. right? So, trap yeah. I do, but trap well, doesn't slip. rhyme with anything. Or slip, or smice. Or whatever you want to say. They sound a little bit weird, so I might leave that one. They could be someone else, do you know what I mean? <laughs> right, what's next for you guys? Well, I mean, uh, it's fortunate. Um, yeah, it's nice. I'm in a fortunate position as, a, as you know, as an actor to have a few options is a nice place to be, and and I'm sort of just sort of deciding now on what are kind of what's next really. It's like I've got a few few options, and it's nice, nice place to be. I'm awesome. Pleased. Yeah, I've been down a job centre already, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hopefully they're gonna they're gonna find me something in the next few weeks. Like, we'll see you in Carl's, <laughs> no, yeah. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, I haven't got anything at the minute in, in lined up. Ride the wave, ride the wave, and you. I've just finished on the second Nanny McPhee film, and uh, very different to the firm. And I've just finished a film called We Want Sex. It's not what you think it is. No, it's a film opposite. Do you know Sally Hawkins? Mm -hmm. She was the lead in Happy Go Lucky. Awesome. So it's a, a film about the female factory workers that went on strike in 1968 in Fords in Dagnum. Awesome. Which will be out uh, September next year. Get that in. Cool. Well, listen, I hope the film's a success. It's absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Cool.